What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I uh, got pulled over by the DOT. Uh, so let's go over what they had to tell me and uh, how the situation come about and all that good stuff. Uh, not that there's a lot good about it. Well, I guess there is one good thing good about it. But uh, we'll go over everything here in just a second. Uh, so, uh, first thing is, I did not have a load on. I had, uh, I've been sick uh, for like the last four or five days. I had picked up a load and, and work's been really slow for me anyway uh, throughout this year. And uh, so just kind of been struggling by and, and trying to do what I can to, to find a load and, and get by. But so anyway, I picked up this load on a Thursday uh, afternoon and I was going to carry it on, but it got a little bit too late. Uh, it was raining, you know, we've been getting a lot of rain and everything and uh, had to tarp it. So it got a little bit too late. And I decided I would carry it uh, Sunday night and drop it uh, Monday morning first thing. Well, I got to feeling worse and got sick over the weekend and I just did not feel like leaving Sunday night or even Monday. I just felt really bad and finally uh, I decided I needed to you know go ahead and get the load delivered Tuesday. So I left my house uh, Tuesday morning about oh probably somewhere around 2 a.m. Still didn't feel great but I felt good enough that I you know I felt confident I could drive. So uh, this load went down to uh, Sealsby, Texas, and uh, so I went down there and I dropped the load off. Everything went good. Uh, stopped at the uh, fuel stop there, getting fuel, headed back out. See the state police over there. And I've been to this place tons and tons of times. Used to run there all the time. Hadn't been in a couple of years. And uh, anyway, so I see this guy over there getting fuel. Didn't think much about it. Went back inside, paid for mine and everything. Come back out, he was gone. No big deal. Uh, so I got my truck and uh, headed back up uh, towards the house. I uh, didn't have another load booked at the time. And uh, so anyway, I'm headed out. <clears throat> get up the road about 10 miles. I see this DOT. Uh, got a truck pulled over on the shoulder. And I said, huh, I wonder if that's the same, same guy. And uh, anyway, so he just got through with him. And uh, he turned his lights off, made a U-turn in the road pulled in behind me, pulled me over, and uh, sure enough, it was the same guy, and as I say, I didn't feel real well, and he came up to me, and uh, opened the door, said he wanted to do an inspection, and I said, well, okay, whatever, you know, I, I looked like I was about half dead, or half drunk, or hung over, or something, and I guess he could tell by the look on my face, like, I, I just did not feel well, did not care. When you get sick, you just do not feel good at all. I didn't want to be there and I didn't care. And uh, he asked, he said, uh, are you sick? And I said, yeah, I've been sick all weekend. He said, what do you got? And I said, uh, well, I've got some kind of stomach bug or something. Uh, so anyway, he uh, said, well, I'm not gonna get too close. I don't want to get up in your truck. I don't want to get sick. And uh, I said, okay, uh, whatever, what do you want me to do? And he wanted me to uh, pump my brakes down or hold my brake pedal down and check uh, for any air leaks. He wanted me to pump my brakes down, all that good stuff which I knew all that would pass. Uh, I, I'm pretty uh, good about keeping up that sort of thing, uh, air leaks and brakes. This truck has auto shift in it, and if you get low air pressure, it ain't gonna shift. You're not going anywhere. You just get hung up in gear and all that stuff. And not to mention, you need good air pressure. People always pulling out in front of you and all that. So uh, anyway, I, I wasn't too concerned about that. Uh, he wanted to check the lights and all that good stuff. Uh, wasn't too concerned about that. Uh, I'm pretty adamant on keeping all my bubs replaced and everything. Uh, I knew all that stuff worked. Uh, so anyway, uh, he wanted to, uh, well, the first thing he, he said, uh, said my batteries was uncovered, which I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, so that was one thing. Then he wanted me to pop my hood. And uh, so I popped my hood and uh, then he came up here and uh, he said my power steering was leaking. And that was another thing. And I've only put, I think I've added power steering fluid to this truck one time. And I don't know, since I've owned the thing five years ago, maybe twice. I don't know. It's It may be seeping a little bit. A lot of it's just stuff that's accumulated on there uh, over the years, I guess. I mean, I wash it off, but every time I add oil to it, this motor uses oil. I spill some on it. Uh, seem like well, you know don't have a funnel or whatever so I think that was part of it but either way 
Uh, and then another thing was my uh, crankcase vent that goes to the ground here is uh, he pulled me over in a real nice wide flat spot right there uh, with pretty white concrete and uh, the uh, crankcase vent right there it dropped a drop of oil on the ground while we were standing there uh, looking at it and because uh, you can see it right where it's located there and uh, he said that's another thing so that was three things right there and uh, so anyway, I'll show you show you what this is, and I'll finish the story. All right, guys. So uh, this is the batteries being uncovered that he seen when he walked up to the side of my truck. As you, he just said the batteries had to be covered. I don't know if it matters with what or, or whatever. But uh, anyway, I got this piece of horse stall mat here. Uh, it's like three quarter thick horse stall mat, and I'm gonna uh, cut. I got that cut, and I'm gonna put it up under here and cover these batteries up. I don't see where that's a really big deal. Uh, cause there was only like a four inch strip, like comes across like right here, about four inches goes from here to there, just kind of hides them. Uh, I can show you on the other side what it looks like. See, this is the other side here, uh, that's not cut out. You can see what that looks like right there. It just kind of goes right here and you see it's already broke out too. It's starting to break off. It's just not as bad as uh, it's not used much. But uh, anyway, uh, I just cut this out right here and uh, on the other side so I could access the batteries. But anyway, evidently that's a big no-no. All right, the next thing is you see this gearbox does has oil, oil all over it. So that is, I mean, I guess it looks bad, but as I say, it's, it's not that big of a thing. I don't think it is, but he thought it was. So anyway, uh, we'll take a look at that. But uh, the other thing is, See, I got two crankcase vents here. One is the factory one right here. Comes up from the top. The other one is this one I added because this motor's got some blow by. And they both run down and come out right there uh, by the uh, oil pan right there. And you can see that really well from this point here, standing here from the side of the truck where I'm standing about three foot away. I mean, you can see all up under there and you can even see it on that rock right there you know if the truck was running sitting there you know for 10 minutes or so you get a drop of oil uh right out of that hose right there on the ground and so uh he wrote me up for an oil leak uh so the only way i know to catch uh to stop that is put a catch can on it like you do in a race car and emptying out from time to time so uh i thought about doing that uh anyway uh at one point because all that blow by gets up under the truck and when you work on it you get all that stuff up under you all over you excuse me and uh i actually routed this one here up to the uh to the air filter up there I was going to try to suck some of that stuff and, and reburn it uh to keep it from getting all up under the truck that didn't work out because it was getting in my uh it was getting in my intercooler and my intercooler boots i only made one trip with it like that but it was starting to leak uh, oil out of my intercooler boots. It was making a bigger mess than it was preventing. So uh, I just plugged that back off up there at the top and uh, then just stuck it down there beside the other one and said good enough. So I may have to get a catch can or something to go on it. All right, so we're going to uh, get this piece of rubber mat here that I have cut. See if we can shove it up in here and uh, cover these batteries up. Or it doesn't look so scary, I guess. Hopefully, anyway. All right, guys, I got the uh, piece of uh, rubber mat there put in there. I had to notch out about uh, behind these wires up in there. You see how far I got it stuck inside there. And the way it is laid over the top of there. And I just secured the edges of it here with some zip ties. And it's tucked up under here right there i think that'll be okay uh i may have to uh secure it a little bit better uh, a little later but uh anyway i got it stuck up in there for right now and uh i'll go ahead and uh, finish my story and wrap this up all right guys so anyway uh the rest of the story is uh after that and me being sick and everything i think the guy uh kind of felt sorry for me because i felt bad man i just want to go home and uh, I was not too concerned with uh, <laughs> anything in the world at that point. You know how it is when you're sick. Uh, anyway, he gave me warnings uh, instead of writing me tickets. I told him, thank you, I appreciate that, because uh, I'm not making any money. 
Uh, it's only load I hauled all week, and uh, the tickets he would have given me would have been way more than the load. Uh, uh, what I profited from the load, time I bought fuel and and uh, paid insurance and everything. So uh, uh, that's a lot of things. A lot of things that uh, people don't understand is uh, these trucks. Some people have. Some people do make some good money with them. Some people don't. Uh, there's a lot of trucks going up and down the road, and people think that just because the truck's going up and down the road, that's making money. That's not always the case. But uh, anyway, that's getting a little bit off topic. And uh, so what I wanted to finish up with is after I left there, I went up the road about uh, eight to ten more miles. There was another DOT sitting on the shoulder. He had a truck pulled over. And I thought, huh, man, these two guys are out today. So I went up the road about another eight to ten more miles. There's another DOT, got another truck pulled over. And uh, he did the, kind of the exact same thing. Uh, the other guy pulled me over was he, he made a U-turn and, was pulling over another truck as I was uh, coming through. I went, man, that's three of them. Ain't been 25 miles. Get up the road a little bit further, about another eight or 10 miles, see the fourth one. I'm going, what in the world these guys got going on? And uh, so anyway, then at that point, I was like, man, I don't know if this is a good place to be coming through. Four of them within 35 miles. Uh, I never used to see any down that way. Uh, every now and again you see one, which is normal. But uh, anyway, so I made it up the road another 20, 25 miles. So I see the fifth one. He's got a truck pulled over. Oversized load. Uh, he had just let him go. And uh, I was like, man, please don't do a U-turn and pull me over. I'm sick. I done got DOT'd like 30 minutes ago, man. <laughs> and anyway... So he didn't make a U-turn. He uh, he kept going in the direction of the truck that he had just pulled over. Uh, so then I got on up the road, and uh, then I seen a uh, the sixth one, and uh, he had a car pulled over. And uh, so then I made it back uh, up to Louisiana line at that point, and uh, I found a truck stop, and uh, I said, "Good enough. I'm gonna uh, take a break. I was tired." and uh, just didn't feel good, still sick. And uh, so I wound up doing a 10 hour break and I wasn't two hours from home probably. Uh, but anyway, this really makes me wonder what's going on with the trucking industry uh, and the police industry uh, as far as that goes. Uh, none of these things that he got me for was really a safety issue as far as something being unsafe that could hurt or kill somebody. Uh, my crankcase vent dropped a, uh, a drop of oil on the ground. Uh, how is that gonna hurt anybody or kill anybody? My batteries, they've been like that for two years. Hadn't been an issue. Uh, I don't see driving down the road uh, how that's gonna cause an issue because that little four inch piece of strip is not there. Uh, I don't see it. Uh, the power steering is seeping a little bit. I don't see that being an issue either because even if it runs slam out of fluid, you still have steering because you, there's a mechanical connection through that gearbox to your steering wheel. It may get a little bit harder to steer, but you're not going to lose control of the truck. Uh, it's not like a, a steering linkage coming loose under the bottom or anything like that. Uh, so it really makes you wonder who's writing these laws and all of that and is it genuinely a safety issue or is it more to generate revenue uh, and by that many of them being out it makes me wonder you know are they really are they trying to save the world or are they trying to save their job I mean is there something going on with the police force just like the trucking that you know are they struggling to keep their job as well because uh, I know a lot of the the trucking guys uh, we're definitely struggling right now with everything going on the way it is uh, Freight's kind of down. Uh, uh, at least the, anything that, that pays anything is. Uh, you can definitely find some loads that you're not going to make anything on. You're just taking a risk. You're wearing your truck out more. You're taking a risk on getting stopped by DOT, put out of service, or wrote tickets for that's going to be more than what the load paid anyway. Uh, so it just makes me wonder what's going on. Is is, is the states really that hired up for money? I mean, you never used to see this. Uh, I didn't really start seeing this till about mid-year last year 
uh, that I got to see in these guys hanging out like this and just pulling over like just swarms of trucks. These guys are pulling over, or at least them guys down there were, they were pulling over, I would estimate five to six trucks an hour a piece. Uh, he had me pulled over according to my e-log 12 minutes. Uh, and as soon as he, as soon as he uh, got done with me, he made a U-turn, turned his lights on, one after the next truck to come by. I mean, uh, all of those guys were pretty much doing the same thing. So how many trucks are they getting an hour? And another thing I was wondering is, are they staying in touch on radio? Are they, are they pulling some of the same trucks over? I mean, if one of the other guys would have got me, would he, have, would he have get me something too? I mean, I really don't understand as far as that part of it goes. But I mean, uh, some of these trucks do have some, uh, you know, some pretty bad problems. Uh, you know, if you have tire problems or brake problems, uh, air problems, that sort of thing, you know, that's a concern. Steering linkage, anything that could cause you to lose control of the truck, uh, and injure someone or, or whatever, you know, that's a big concern and I understand that. Uh, but I, it just makes me wonder, you know, on some of this stuff like this, what's really going on, you know? You just gotta sit back and look at the big picture and wonder what's really going on. And uh, try to look at things from their point of view as well uh, of what's going on. I mean, are they getting, are they getting forced out there to do that against their will to, uh, to justify their job, so to speak? I mean, because that can't be that can't be that exciting uh, to sit there and just pull guys over that's trying to make a living, uh, just just like that for, you know, not doing anything wrong or whatever. And when they pull you over, they're gonna find something wrong. It doesn't matter if you have a brand new truck, a brand new trailer, or whatever. Uh, they can and will find something wrong. I had a guy tell me that he had a brand new truck that he had bought. He got stopped coming from the dealer, and uh, that they told him that they were going to do an inspection. He told me he had a brand new truck. They weren't going to find anything wrong. Uh, they wrote him a ticket for having plastic valve caps, uh, plastic valve stem uh, caps on the truck. It's supposed to have metal valve stem uh, caps on the truck. Uh, so yeah, they wrote him a ticket for that. Brand new truck. Uh, just left the dealer 20 miles from my dealership. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if they pull you over, they can and will find something wrong. Uh, I, I've really never talked to, to, to any driver that that says they've been pulled over and they absolutely found nothing wrong. I, I, I don't think I've ever heard a driver say that. So uh, again, it, it just kind of makes you wonder what's what's really going on with the whole trucking industry. Uh, just kind of feel like everybody hates trucks, and but everybody likes to go to Walmart and get their stuff or go to the hardware store and get their stuff. But I don't know how it's supposed to get there without trucks. But they keep making all this stuff harder and harder, and uh, just makes you makes you wonder what's really going on again uh so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up and uh if anybody knows anything in the comments of what's what's really going on uh you know leave leave in the comments your thoughts opinions i'd love to hear uh but anyway my situation wasn't that uh wasn't that big of a deal just some minor issues need to get corrected and as i say they're going to find that whether it's a brand new truck or older truck or whatever uh the guy was real nice and everything uh and all that good stuff so I guess that's it for this video. Uh, we'll have another couple videos coming out in the next few days. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.